Japan is one of the few non-Western countries in the world that has reached the status of developed nation. It's home to the fourth largest economy in the world and is a regional power in Asia. The nation is the envy of many throughout the world because of its success in modernization and ability to preserve its distinct national culture. Despite Japan's significance in the world though, many don't know how the powerhouse of Asia operates. The first thing that pops into an outsider's head is probably the emperor, but the monarch doesn't have the power it once did. In fact, Japan is one of the most democratic political systems in the world. To understand how Japan got to where it is today, one needs to go back to before the end of World War II. Prior to Japan's defeat at the hands of the United States and its allies, the country was ruled by a totalitarian government. The Meiji Constitution, which was named after one of Japan's most important emperors, was the supreme law of the land. Unlike the United States, where a country's right to govern or sovereignty comes from the people, Japan's sovereignty came from the emperor. There was a parliament called the Diet, which was made up of elected officials and nobles, but they had little to no power. The real power was concentrated in the emperor's cabinet, which was appointed and accountable to him. During wartime, the military tended to dominate the emperor's cabinet. The emperor essentially had no real checks on his power, and Japanese society at the time revered him as a god. The constitution listed responsibilities the people had to the emperor and the country, rather than rights for themselves. The allies planned to destroy this form of government though. Before the end of the war, the allies issued the Potsdam Declaration, which was essentially an order for Japan to surrender and start to demilitarize the country and lead it towards democracy. The declaration would be an outline for the allies and their plans in the land of the rising sun. The United States would be the primary force in Japan during their occupation and sought to rebuild the country. General Douglas MacArthur would be chosen to be the supreme commander of allied powers in Japan, which wanted to make the nation a genuine western democracy. At first, Japanese bureaucrats would be tasked to create a more liberal constitution for the nation, but the emperor and other officials were reluctant to amend it. Their draft had minimal changes which MacArthur would outright deny. The general would then tell his own staff to create a constitution for the nation before the deadline, which was less than a week. The new constitution was primarily written by Americans with a little input from Japanese scholars, but overall the constitution is American made. The American design document would be adopted by the Japanese government with only minor changes to it. Japanese society would be completely altered by the creation of this new government. Civil rights and freedoms of citizens would be firmly enshrined in the constitution. One of the most important developments is in Article 9 of Japan's constitution, which renounced the country's right to wage war, meaning that the nation would only keep an army for self-defense. The post-war constitution is considered one of the most liberal documents in the world and is still being used to this day. It would establish Japan's government as a centralized state made of 47 prefectures, which essentially work as states. Each prefecture has its own governor and legislature, which run the many local governments in the area. The government isn't federal like the United States though. The national government Japan has complete supremacy over all the regional governments. That's not all the constitution changed though. Japan's judiciary was completely revamped. Judges were given quite a lot of independence to prevent political interference, and five different levels of courts were created. The summary court is the lowest and usually handles civil cases and minor criminal offenses. Family courts primarily handle domestic disputes in small cases, while district courts take appeals from lower courts and handle the felony cases. High courts take the appeals from the district, family, and summary courts, while the Supreme Court is the highest in Japan and is the final court of appeal. They also have the power of judicial review, which means they determine if a law is constitutional, and if the law is not, then it's struck down. The Supreme Court is made of 15 members appointed by the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. Judges have to retire at the age of 70 and can be removed by referendum every 10 years. The Chief Justice of the Court is chosen by the Cabinet and appointed by the Emperor. Judges of the inferior courts are appointed by the Cabinet, but only from a list of people chosen by the Supreme Court. After designing the Court, the framers made Japan's legislative branch resemble the previous constitutions, but it's given much more power. The Parliament was called the National Diet and was made the most powerful branch of government. The Diet is made up of two separate chambers. The House of Representatives is the lower chamber of the Diet and made up of 465 five elected officials who serve four-year terms. 289 of the members are elected through a simple majority vote by whatever district they're campaigning in, but the 176 other members are elected by a party list system, which is done by proportional representation. This means that a party will run for office with a list of candidates, and if their party were to get 70% of the votes, then they get 70% of the 176 seats up for election. The House of Representatives is subject to being dissolved by the Prime Minister, but this is offset by their ability to remove the Prime Minister through a vote of no confidence. The upper chamber is called the House of Councilors, which has 245 members that serve six-year terms. 73 of the members come from each of the 47 pre 
prefectures and are elected through a majority vote in districts where multiple candidates can win a seat. 48 members are elected nationally through proportional representation. The House of Counselors can veto or block any law that the House of Representatives passes, but their veto can be overridden if two-thirds of the representatives vote to pass the law. Unlike the House of Representatives, this chamber cannot be dissolved by the Prime Minister. Both chambers have the power to elect the Prime Minister from an official within the Diet, but if they don't agree within a certain time limit, then the candidate elected by the House of Representatives is chosen. While the Constitution may have made the legislative branch more powerful, that doesn't mean the executive branch is powerless. The first major change that the constitution made to the executive branch was taking power away from the emperor. Japan's imperial majesty has become simply a symbol of the Japanese state rather than a figure with legitimate political authority. The emperor is meant to unite the Japanese people and perform ceremonial tasks such as rubber stamping appointments made by the cabinet or national diet. The real power is held in the hands of the prime minister and the cabinet. Since the House of Representatives has the most power in choosing the prime minister, the leader of the majority party in the House tends to be chosen for the role. The cabinet is made up of heads of government ministries who are appointed by the prime minister. It is required though that the majority of the cabinet be from parliament. The prime minister and his cabinet handle the daily affairs of the government by implementing laws that are passed, and they can also present bills to the diet so they can eventually become laws. Each brand of government shows that it was designed with extreme care to embrace Japanese culture while also ensuring democratic rule. The post-war constitution of Japan has stood the test of time, but it's not without its critics. Corruption is a problem in the country, and while there have been reforms, they've had minimal effects at best. Many politicians are still caught in corruption scandals involving campaign finance from private corporations. The Japanese party system is rife with problems as well. Despite the Liberal Democratic Party being in power for the majority of the post war era, Japan's political leadership tends to be very volatile. The government has been unable to tackle the economic troubles of Japan, which has been stagnant for many years now. Politicians within the country have spoken about reform to the constitution many times, but it has yet to happen. Overall, the constitution has established a well-functioning democracy, but its future is left up in the air. The temporary constitution designed by Americans ended up being the long-term status quo for the Japanese people, and whether or not this is a good thing is still up for debate. But one thing's for certain, the land of the rising sun has a remarkable history of building a successful country and many still look towards the nation as a model of what their country could achieve.